Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing game 16 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the St. Louis Blues, in which the Sharks have lost 4 to 1. A game that is very similar to the one the Sharks played just a few days ago against the Colorado Avalanche. The Sharks, past the first period at the very least, were kind of just completely outclassed in the offensive and defensive zone. The St. Louis Blues sort of just ran circles around the Sharks, and they really had no chance past the first 20 minutes to get anything offensively going and we're just run around as I said in the defensive zone what's actually somewhat interesting though is that this game went a bit different than that game went against Colorado against Colorado the Sharks had multiple opportunities to clear the puck out of the zone and prevent themselves from getting hemmed in so much but they would just give the puck away and the Colorado Avalanche took advantage of that here with the Blues however it wasn't so much that the Sharks were giving so many pucks away though let's obviously be clear that they were turning pucks over but a lot of it was just that the blues were faster winning more puck battles and just seemed a lot more sharp than the sharks did the sharks just did not seem like they wanted to win this game as much as the st louis blues did so at times in the defensive zone for the sharks it seemed as though the blues had an extra player on the ice because there was just always someone there to receive a perfect cross ice pass the sharks just had no ability to stop from getting I mean just on the penalty kill for the San Jose Sharks which has been so superb thus far this season the Blues ended up with four power plays in this game only went one for four the first goal of this game for the Blues was on the power play and yet they probably could have had maybe one or two more just because of how many dangerous looks because of all the cross ice passes that were coming on the Sharks were trying to be aggressive on the penalty kill as usual but it just wasn't really having the same positive effect like it had been on many of the other teams they had faced this season. Basically, the Blues just systematically outplayed the San Jose Sharks. However, that part, as I said, was not really true in the first period. In fact, the first period was pretty back and forth, and while the Blues would have the only goal of those first 20 minutes coming from Brandon Saad, as I said, on the power play, the Sharks had a lot of great opportunities to try and bury one, and you can even look back at that and say, well, maybe if the Sharks had scored a goal, or maybe even two in that first period, this game would have looked a whole lot different, because it was in the second period where the wheels absolutely just came off. It's funny that the Sharks scored their only goal of this game in that middle frame but the Blues would also get two goals for themselves from Rob Thomas pretty early in the second period as well as then another goal from Brandon Saad to make it 3-1 however throughout the second period if you were watching this you would know that the Sharks just did not even look on a similar level to the St. Louis Blues who just got shot after shot after shot and these weren't perimeter type of shots that the Sharks are usually used to giving up in games where they're winning these were shots coming from you know between the dots right in the slot good chances to be able to score and the fact that the Sharks only gave up two goals in the second period is actually a testament to how well Reimer actually played in this game reminder the Blues almost reached 50 shots in this game and while I do think that shot counter was maybe slightly inflated it felt as though the the Blues were racking up shots faster than they were actually getting them you know Above 40 definitely seems very realistic, which is just not a good thing to give up in the NHL, you know kind of captain obvious for saying that and then when it came into the third period we were hoping the Sharks could maybe make some sort of comeback after a disastrous second period but just about a minute in it would be Jordan Cairo scoring to make it 4-1 and that pretty much put the game away for the St. Louis Blues even if there were still 19 minutes left the Sharks just didn't really get much of anything generated in the third period and so while they weren't as dominated the Blues didn't really have to work as much for the win like they did in the second period and the the Sharks kind of just went silent away at the end of this five game road trip which now finishes two and three here with victories against the wild and the flames and losses against the jets avalanche and here tonight against the st louis blues moving on to the lineup there's actually kind of an uh, an important distinction to make as i said the sharks were very even with the st louis blues in the first period and so all four of these lines actually looked rather impressive through the first 20 minutes uh the uh, balsers hurdle barabanov line had multiple good chances and came very close to scoring a you know hurdle actually stole the puck away from some blues players a couple times in this game had some really good looks just not getting some great shots on 
Net. Uh, the third line, Calgliano, Benino, Nieto, even though they're not really going to be bringing much offense to any game that they play, actually had some decent shifts in the offensive zone in that first period. And even the fourth line, players like LeBanc and Gadjevic actually looked quite effective in that first 20-minute frame. But once the second period came along, all three of those lines just did a complete 180. The third line went back to not being at all allowed in the offensive zone, just not doing anything there. The second line got very sloppy with the puck and to a point where the second line actually got changed around a bit. Balsers was moved down. We saw LeBanc jump up to that second line. We saw Weatherby on that second line. And the fourth line didn't even really seem to exist at that late point in the game. Really only the first line, which I have yet to mention, of Meyer, Dallin, and Couture kept up a reasonable amount of pressure through this full 60 minutes. And as I said, this was the only line to actually score a goal in this game and probably the only good news of the game in as in general was that Dallin managed to score his seventh of the year in the second and third period while it wasn't some sort of crazy sustained pressure from the first line it was probably you know the very few and far between chances that the Sharks were getting if you were to actually sort of look up you would see oh, okay it's the Sharks first line because none of the other lines were really generating much of anything in this game basically this is one of those games that at the end of a road trip here, the Sharks just kind of got completely destroyed by the Blues. Like I said, against the Blue, uh, against the Colorado Avalanche, this is a game that you just put in the rearview mirror really, really quickly after and hope to kind of regroup like the Sharks did in the following game against Minnesota, which was just two days ago. On to the defensive side of things, which of course was not particularly good at all here tonight. The first pairing in particular was kind of victimized a lot. Brent Burns seemed to have some pretty uh, big issues trying to get positioning in front of the net. A couple of times on these power plays for the St. Louis Blues, Brandon Saad was just winning out in the uh, battles in front of the net, and it resulted in that first goal from Brandon Saad that made it 1-0 St. Louis. But Brent Burns just had a lot of issues in the defensive zone in this game. It's been pretty rare that we've seen that from Brent Burns this season. It's maybe been a small handful of games. Usually he's been quite solid, but this was definitely one that Brent Burns is going to want to forget about. And the same would go, though, to a lesser extent, Mario Ferraro. On to the second pairing. Uh, Jacob Middleton, I thought, was decent. You know, didn't have any terrible plays, though obviously, just as a whole, with the Sharks getting outplayed, it's not as though Middleton was some sort of stalwart on the back end. The player who I actually want to talk about on this pairing, as I guess usual, because of how high event his game is, is Eric Carlson. Because if you were to just watch Eric Carlson in tonight's game in the offensive zone, you would say, wow, Eric Carlson had such a wonderful game. Look at all the plays he was setting up in the offensive zone. And you'd be correct about that half of his game because he actually showed off some pretty crafty moves in the offensive zone, had some nice plays and passes there, some decent shots even earlier on into this game. But then if you were to look at the other half of the game, which in this one was actually the other 80% of the game, in the defensive zone, Eric Carlson had a lot of issues. There were turnovers. There was him overskating multiple pucks there were him uh, being unable to control pucks and them sort of just rolling off of his stick he kind of looked like a peewee player playing against NHL players he just looked at times very very rough out there in the defensive zone there was a lot of opportunities where he was trying to carry the puck out as you would normally see an Eric Carlson player do but instead he kind of would just let it go behind him and the Blues probably got at least four or five chances directly from Eric Carlson misplays so he had the offensive side of his game that was nice to see and you know that when it comes to Eric Carlson especially these days there is going to be a slight sacrifice defensively so you can get that offensive upside but that sacrifice was way too massive here tonight Eric Carlson was a direct liability for the Sharks probably the worst defenseman I would say defensively for the Sharks here tonight maybe slightly above Brett Burns on the third pairing, it was Hataka and Vlasic. I wouldn't say that these two players necessarily stood out in a bad way, though there were definitely some misplays from both of them. Mark Edward Vlasic a couple times in the defensive zone had pucks jump over his stick. Hataka had a couple of giveaways in the defensive zone as well. A bit more forgivable for Hataka than it is for Mark Edward Vlasic, just considering the experience difference between these two players. But it was definitely a drop-off from where they were in the previous game against the Minnesota 
Wild where it seemed as though they could do no wrong to here tonight where, you know, there wouldn't have been much of a difference with Redeem Shemek in the lineup either over either Vlasic or uh, Hataka. So moving on to the goaltending, we have James Reimer who was back between the pipes here tonight. So unlike against the Colorado Avalanche where I talked about how all the players in front of Aiden Hill did poorly, but Hill did really didn't do the Sharks any favors either. Here tonight, Reimer did, you know, his best to try and keep the Sharks alive in this game. I can overlook this fourth goal here from the Blues, even though it was a bit of a backbreaker. It's definitely one he's going to want back on the Jordan Cairo shot. There's no traffic in front that just sort of beats him on the glove side. But when it comes to these three previous goals, he essentially had no chance on any of them. And he had to make so many tough saves, in particular in the second period, to try and keep this San Jose Sharks team alive. So he was probably the Sharks' best player here tonight. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. And the fact that he let in four goals and yet still had a save percentage above 900 just because of the amount of shots the Sharks actually gave up in this game kind of just says a lot about the situation. But that will do it for this review uh, of tonight's game. The Sharks will be back in action on Saturday where they will take on the Washington Capitals. The Capitals, it will be the third and final game of their California road trip. They lost to the Ducks. They beat the Washington. Uh, they beat the Los Angeles Kings in a couple of very close games. And we'll, we'll see if the Sharks can get back on track like they had done against Minnesota just a couple of days ago after a rough one against Colorado. And we'll see if they, we continue this up and down streak that the Sharks have been on in terms of wins and losses and see if the Sharks can maybe get something a bit rolling here on home ice. Class dismissed.